Very good afternoon and welcome back to Oberstdorf for the last race in the four that have been held here in the Tour de Ski. It's stage four for the women, the first of the skiathlons as they're now known, the pursuits in the old days. And apologies for the slightly late arrival. I'm sure you'll agree we're staying with the Four Hills to see the uh, finish of that last event in Garmisch. Well, the news is uh, the story's a familiar one here, Mike, as they come through the exchange. Justina Kowalczyk has stolen the bonus seconds and she leads into the exchange. But this second half, the freestyle ski is not her favourite. It's not her favourite, Patrick. She did pick up the first of the bonus seconds, uh, only one kilometre from the changeover. And significantly, Bjorgen was down in fifth place. So only picking up a few extra seconds, Bjorgen. So Poland leading three Norwegians, followed by Charlotte Kalla of Sweden. And uh, just separating uh, Kalla and the Norwegians is... Aina Kaiser Saarinen, who's had a good race so far. So uh, the five big names on the tour, right up in the top five places. And uh, I think this is going to be the story from here all the way to the Alchemist, Mike. The top, the top are going to spread away from the rest of the field. It's quite a margin, isn't it, from a Kowalczyk back to at the start of today. Bjorgen was 22.2 seconds behind it, all the way back to Johan, it's one minute, one second. So without a doubt, Kowalczyk is spreading the field. And look at the gaps here. It just shows the strength of, uh, well, three four of the best in the women's field. Well, there are the overall rankings at the moment. As they stand, Kowalczyk, Bjorgen, Johaug still only separated by a minute five, but Bjorgen has dropped from 22 seconds uh, behind to 36, and she has got to start turning it around. Today and the next race in uh, Dobiaco, Mike, for me, are the ones where she's got to do it because she's a slightly better freestyle skier than Kowalczyk. Well, she is, and, and look at Kowalczyk. Kowalczyk knows that to pick up the 15 seconds in just another kilometer she has to be at the front. I would say Therese Johaug, Bib 3, is going to press her for the first place across the line. But at least uh, Bjorgen can pick up a fourth place. But we'd expect her to move forward up the steep climb. Well, here are the rest of the field. And now Charlotte Keller has moved up in the fifth place ahead of uh, number 22, which, of course, is Rita Lisa Ropenen, 17. That's Christofsson from Norway. The Finns are there in numbers. Nice to see that Masako Ishida having another good run. She was brilliant last year, finished 15th in this event. And Ishida, who made such an impression in Oberhof four days, or well, three days ago it was, uh, in that second event. She was really flying then. Oh, she, she, she is a very good classic skier and remember at the Olympics in the 30 kilometer mass start she finished in fifth place she's wearing 14 at the back of this little column we've also got Sarah Sawyer of Finland in there so the Finns maintaining their strength they of course have a very good record in this run they have Koitunen who's won this event twice Kowalczyk has won it twice bidding to win it for the third time in succession this year and I have to say it's looking more and more likely that that is the way it's going to turn out on the Alpchemis it seems that way I mean Kowalczyk's just you just feel a grinding down Bjorgen's confidence, although Bjorgen they are still placed in fourth at the moment. Their legs still haven't adjusted, Patrick, from the classic technique. It's been such a high-impact race so far. They haven't quite adjusted onto the skating yet. Now, I know you've done a few triathlons in your time. Mike, switching from the bike to the run is a painful process. It's not quite the same from, from classic to freestyle. Not quite the same, but it does absolutely take at least a kilometre to, to get some feeling back in your legs. This is more like uh, sitting on the bike and you've just been effectively running. You, you feel quite heavy, certainly for the first one, two kilometres. But they now need to ask themselves to sprint up this climb. So a total distance for the women of 10 kilometres. The first five obviously complete. That's where this exchange took place. And they're on this uh, third lap now. And this is where they have the final intermediate sprint before the finish. The top 10 will get points. And then as they come into the finish, only the top three gaining bonus points or bonus seconds, we should say. Bjorgen not panicking through the exchange it was a clean enough exchange but the indication Mike that she wasn't too worried but watching her drop away here I'd certainly be a little bit concerned she's just uh, if this was Bjorgen at her most confident she'd be she'd be leading this and breaking them at this point so clearly there's something a little uh, troubling Bjorgen we'll, we'll have to wait and see the climb Saarinen she was eight seconds she's dropping back that's bib number four 
Stiara doing uh, exceptionally well. She's the other Norwegian in that leading group of four, incidentally. So Stiara, Johau, Bjorgen, three of the top women from the World Championships last year. And, of course, Kowalczyk, who's been the number one in the world for the last couple of seasons. Always that argument, who's the better skier, Kowalczyk or Bjorgen? Well, when you look at the medals that Bjorgen won at the World Championships, was it five gold, one silver? Outstanding. But uh, for me, Kowalczyk, she's been the best in the world for the last three years in the overall uh, World Cup competition. Therese Johau going well on the inside line. Bjorgen's going to have to go the long way round if she wants to get all 15 bonus seconds, but doesn't look as though she's put up the sprint yet. Bjorgen, of course, in the black bib on the left of your screen as you look. Johau leading the way. No way through for Kowalczyk at the moment. Stiara not making a move. She's not much of a sprinter, but it's Johau, the best of the climbers, and maybe this is a sign of things to come on the Alp Chamise. So, no effort from Bjorgen to get past Kowalczyk. That's probably an indication that she's not feeling that fresh after a really tough day yesterday. Uh, four times around uh, the 1.2 kilometer maximum effort. It, it's got to be in their legs. It absolutely has to be. I suppose Therese Johau went around that uh, less times than the rest. Good improvement from Ropen and all the women who did well last year are doing well again. Ropenham was in the top 10 in this event last year and it pulled her right up the rankings. She needs that. She's down in 22nd position, 249 off the leaders. I don't think there's any doubt that that margin is going to grow, but she should be, be able to improve her position up into the top 15. Kala, 27 seconds behind now. As we've mentioned a number of times, not very well over the Christmas break. She made a last minute decision to take part in the tour. All credit to for flying down on the last flight. I wonder how much damage and whether it's going to be a similar scenario to 2008 where she won the Tour but could hardly race again for 18 months. Yeah, I hope not, although she would certainly not have started the day if she was feeling bad and that certainly her, her pace on the in this the, the freestyle segment, she, she seems to be lifting her game about the fourth fastest time at the moment. One lap still to go and Marit Bjurgen shows her colours for the first time. Obersdorf in southwest Germany playing host to the third and fourth leg of the Tour de Ski for 2011-2012. Now we're into the new year and it gets very serious indeed. A day off tomorrow, they'll need that. And then we have five races remaining over the next seven days. It's a really tough program. I'm just trying to look at the programme, Mike, to see where where Bjorgen can pull the time back on Kowalczyk. In Toblak, where we go next, we've got a three-kilometre individual classic race. Kowalczyk has proved to be better at classic this year than Bjorgen. They then have a freestyle sprint. Maybe Bjorgen can get a little time there. You would expect it, but with Kowalczyk sparking so well all round, and she, and she really wants this, this Kowalczyk. So, but I agree, I think Bjorgen can do something on that day to pull some seconds back. Well, there's no sign of the pole tiring, and even if she does tire, she won't give up. I think that's probably her best asset, isn't it? Her ability to hurt herself when she's out on the tracks. There you see the bonus seconds awarded for that last sprint. Johau Kowalczyk Bjorgen getting the bulk of them, and then Stiara with eight seconds further down the list. Kala just picking up a few, and uh, I do, I do. A, approve of the changes for those bonuses much more fun when 10 people can get bonus seconds i think so and all the effort to stay at the front of the pack it, it encourages more dynamic racing kowalczyk their third position at the moment styra just not able to push styra how many times has she been fourth in racing especially at the olympic games four times in fourth position at the olympics yeah bad timing as far as her career goes uh, she's just come along when two or three of the strongest skiers magic retires johau steps it up a level and uh, she's off the podium time and time again do you, do you think there's a case for different rules, different formats for the women's and the men's? The men where we have so many competitors, the women where we have, realistically, we have 10 who could win the tour, but you'd put your money on two of them all the time. Well, it, it's been the case for a long time where you get only three, four, five, and now that, as you say, Maditz uh, and Follis have, have left, have retired, it, it has only left two very strong athletes. Johaug, as you mentioned, is coming stronger. There is a great young batch, though, uh, of, of athletes coming through, Latin, Mackie and Niskanen from Finland. 
There are the overall rankings. Kvalchuk, Bjorgen, Johaug still the top three as they have been after uh, day one. Saarinen trying, trying her best. Put up a great effort on the second day in Oberhof, but uh, doesn't quite have that extra little something that Koitonen used to have to win the tour. And these are the three ladies that are likely to battle it out over the next week. Now, imperative that Marit Bjurgen scores not just a time bonus here by winning the sprint into the finish, but she scores a psychological bonus over Kowalczyk and says, I'm still a whole lot better than you at the freestyle. And she's to do that, she's got to be at the top of the hill some 15, 20 metres clear. It's a good point. Marit needs to, to regain that, that invincibility she had even coming into this season. Up in Kusamo, she looked untouchable, but has looked a little fragile over the last three, four days. Compare the physiques of uh, Johaug in second and Bjorgen in front. <laughs> it's a huge comparison there. Johaug, she's even shorter than me. She's only about five <laughs> foot one. And, and, uh, and weighs 51 kilos. <laughs> Similar to me. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> and the, 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 the field is getting completely spread out now. They really are destroying the rest of the field. Marit Gugan, it took a bit of time to get her straps organised after the uh, transition. Has to uh, just fiddle with them again. I think she's just trying to tighten it up so she's got good control of the seat. Really important to have the right tension on the, ski the, the strap, the pole strap, just so you control it when your hands aren't actually gripping the pole. Nothing worse than having to hold on to it tight in between each stride. Talking off the pole uh, for Kowalczuk, she said, obviously she wants to win the Tour de Ski, but she said for the first time ever, the World Cup going to her home country on the 17th and 18th of February, that is the biggest aim for her season is to win there back home in Poland. So here we go, the start of the final section of climbing on the women's uh, ski athlon here. Stage four of the Tour de Ski, and it's the three big women in front. Kowalczyk breaks to her right, and that's a good move from her because she can block off Bjorgen, who's stuck in behind from behind Johaug, but Johaug still holding her own, leading the way up to the top of the climb. Good effort from her. Bjorgen in black once again seems to be easing off. It's uh, very uncharacteristic but when it's not going her way, I guess there is a tendency for her to ease off quicker than normal. It's very strange. Although, uh, well, look at Kowalczyk. What an amazing fighter. Although Kowalczyk looks like she's going to be first over the top. It would not surprise me if Bjorgen's still going to win this one. Well, it's a technical finish here in uh, Obersdorf and a vital win again for Kowalczyk. She keeps the pressure on. This is about getting to the finish line first. Again, the top three separated by just 1.7 seconds. It, what a treat we've got this year. The men's tour is exceptional. The women's with three contenders, very, very good indeed. Down they come. And look, those small margins at the top have expanded to 20, 30 metres. And Bjorgen has to use the slipstream here if she wants to win coming into the finish. She's got great skis as Bjorgen. I still think she can come through to take this one although leaving it very late. 20 metres clear and she's got the problem of getting past Johan. She's got a good line, the same as Petter Nortug into the last turn now. And Bjorgen still carrying good speed. Kowalczyk, who looks a little like a young giraffe on the pair of skis, is shown wanting. Oh, what a brilliant turn of speed from Marit Bjorgen. She just seemed to want the victory. She wasn't so hungry for the intermediates points. But she's not going to gain enough time to make up for the fact that she lost the sprint. She's got she's got another stage win, but I don't quite understand her tactics. That was quite strange. Oh, she didn't seem to have the power there on the uphill climbs and then lost a number of bonus seconds. Nice to win. Nice to win. That seems to be what it's about. For the first time this year, she has managed to deny Justina Kowalczyk in the sprint home. It's very interesting, not even a congratulation or acknowledgement there. Yeah, the interesting body language between the two great champions. I'm just wondering, whether, Mike, whether that was the psychological advantage that she wanted. As we watch the sprint for four, five, six, and uh, Stiara comes through to get four. Sarasoya, five. We've got Kala in sixth place, the best she's done so far this year. And another top ten finish for Kick and Randall of the United States. What a fabulous tour she is having, and I wouldn't be surprised 
nice to see her in the top five at the end of the week, or next week, that is. Christofsson, 10. We've got Kiloinen, Ishida, Fessel, Zeller, Buller. The Germans all working together today, and they're only a minute and four seconds behind the winning time. So they keep themselves well and truly in the running for a top 10 in the tour. Well, there's the model from Norway. Therese Johaug, what a career she's having on and off skis. And no wonder. Fessel did well. And of course, Zella, she's from here. She's trained on these tracks forever. 14th position. So there's the uh, German trio. I think they enjoyed skiing together there. You obviously train uh, hour after hour together. You know everyone's strengths and weaknesses. And, and we, we discussed it earlier on in the men's race, Mike. Is there room for a team effort? Or do you think uh, they haven't quite developed like the Tour de France? I don't think they have. And especially with these bonus seconds, uh, really they don't allow there to be any sort of breathing space, any recovery space in the race. So it just leaves the strong ones at the front. The weaker ones cannot stay with it in order to help the stronger ones in, uh, tactically. Exhaustion at the end of uh, day four of racing, though. Is that Ingmar's daughter on the ground? It's certainly not Charlotte Caller. Absolutely uh, out for the count on the snow. Well, there's puddles in some of this snow. <laughs> I hope, that, I hope that they're lying on decent amount of snow under them. 42. It's Larson. Lisa Larson. <laughs> Good effort from her. She's finished much higher than her position in the Tour. 37, looking uh, fresh. Elizabeth Stefan from USA. Marit Bjorgen just uh, recovering from her effort. Mike, trying to explain her tactics. She, OK, she was up there. She picked up some bonus seconds, but not masses. And she didn't go for the full 15 to try and get ahead of Kowalczyk. But she, she seemed desperately to want to secure the win. That, that seemed to be the key thing for Bjorgen. And maybe psychologically, just to get that gain above uh, Kowalczyk, that was necessary. So cast your eye over the uh, top 10. Familiar names all the way through. Looking for a few surprises. May Anne Kiloinen, one of the youngsters coming through for Finland. As Mike says, there is a new batch of youngster coming through. And we're looking forward to some great things. Nice to see Ishida back in the top 15 for Japan. And uh, she's done so well over the last couple of years. Anna Haag, 16th at the moment. She won here in this event last year. Not quite the same story this time around 108 behind business as usual for Marit Bjorgen her first stage win on the tour this year and so important Mike uh, food drink dry clothes warmth uh, a little bit of a warm down after that effort definitely you, they, they will all be out uh, skiing after this and of course they have to go to the press conference but they'll get a good warm down later get rid of the lactic quick break coming up we'll be back with the overall standings in the tour de ski after four stages Well, these are the scenes in Oberstdorf. It's been a very warm, very mild couple of days here. Rain yesterday. At least we haven't had too much rain today, but the temperatures are around plus five, plus six. They've had to put salt on all the tight corners, the start, the finish, just to ensure that the snow has stayed firm all the way through the competition. We've checked the weather conditions for the next few days, and uh, by the time we get to uh, Toblak, Dobiaco, it should be about minus six, minus seven. Those are perfect racing conditions. We're waiting now for the overall standings in the Tour de Ski after four of nine stages, so five still to go, and we do know that Kowalczyk is going to be in front. The question is, what is the margin? At the start of the day, it was 22 seconds. Bjorgen may have won the race today, but Kowalczyk picked up the bulk of the bonus seconds. Kowalczyk did, and uh, her strategy was to go hard. She'd got the maximum 15-second bonus on the first of the classic uh, times, and I think she picked up third place on the second of the sprint, which was on the skating. So, well, we got a second, Mike. From what we've seen, of those leading three, Johau, Kowalczyk, Bjorgen, who's going to be the quicker, quickest up the Alp Chamise? I think it'll be Johau. She's just so strong in the hills. But again, it's how much energy is going to be left after nine races in 11 days. Well, Johaug will certainly have a crack at it if she's within a couple of minutes, even of Justina Kowalczyk, who just has a mind to die for. 
unbelievable determination. Jürgen, who is on fantastic form, won five of the seven races that she entered before Christmas, suddenly finding that life isn't so easy. Very, very quick down the final hill, so the technicians need some thanking, but good technique as well, finely balanced coming out of that last corner. That took her to victory over Justina Kowalczyk for the first time in the Tour this year. A fascinating situation developing, and the next five days of racing are going to be brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, the tour, the, the, the drive along down to Italy and, and, and the day's rest, they all need a day's rest. And uh, probably for some of them, they won't even get on their skis, just have a complete day off. The technicians will be frantic as usual. Yeah, all credit to Jörg Kapol, Vergard Ulvang and their team for developing this uh, particular event. It's still very young. This is only the sixth time that this tour has been run. Not a lot of uh, spare flesh around uh, on Therese Johaug, skin and bone, but that's why she has such a huge advantage going up the hills. So strong, and uh, yeah, her physique, the stomach muscles, so strong, the core is strong, the arms are strong. Justina Kowalczyk, congratulations to the tour lead. The leader. Were you surprised when Marit Bering took you over? Uh, no, I was not surprised. Uh, in the last uh, downhill, my leg was not working, but uh, I'm satisfied with number two. Tomorrow we have rest day. Is that a good day for you, or would you like to continue immediately with other competitions? No, I don't like. I like to rest. <laughs> what was your preview to Toblach? Uh, in Toblach we have a really nice uh, race. It's 3K Classic, and... Uh, this will be, I think, my best race in the tour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, a couple of revealing things there. I can tell you that Kowalczyk takes 25 days off the snow each year. That is all. Otherwise, she's always training up on the glaciers or on the roller skis. And uh, what a fantastic uh, race she's had today. But she was absolutely right. The next race, that 1.5 classic, or is it three kilometer classic in Toblak, is going to be a cracker. And it, it plays to her strengths. It, it does. She just attacks. So she takes a little bit of a little time to get up her momentum up. We see that in sprint racing. But yes, she will attack that uh, with a fierce uh, amount of energy. And Bjorgen, I think psychologically, Bjorgen needs to try and get beat her by 10 seconds in that event. Yeah, I think Bjorgen needs the rest day more than anyone else. 26 seconds now, so only four seconds added to the deficit that we had at the start of today. It can still go either way, but you do feel that Bjorgen has got to, start, got to find something extra if she's going to win the Tour for the first time, if she's going to become the first Norwegian ever to win a Tour de Ski uh, title. And that uh, includes the men. Of course, Petter Nortug in a very strong position impressed by him this morning very impressive he's got this determination a bit like yeah, Kowalczyk he's got this steely determination that even when he's totally fatigued he can bring something special out well that's all we've got time for today thanks for watching here on Eurosport International a great day of ski jumping and cross country skiing remember we still have five stages to go in the Tour de Ski and it starts again on the 3rd of January we'll be kicking off with the men's 5 kilometer classic it will be fast and furious if you're watching in the UK that of course is 11.45 and the women going a little later on 15.45 local time in Toblak right up in the north of Italy an area known as the South Tyrol. It's beautiful, but the tracks are brutal. So it's going to be a tough day once again. And then after that, another four stages before they reach the Alchemies. That's all for now from Mike and myself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.